Dr. Mohamed Munir is a virologist at Lancaster University and he joins me now. Great to speak to you once again. Always a pleasure. Um, first of all, have governments wasted precious time in sourcing these chemicals and are we all now paying the price? Oh, thank you very much, Maria, for having me once again onto the show. I think this is really critical to understand that not only for the reagent uh, perspective, many other uh, aspects have been really at the stumbling block. And that is mainly because the time that I have been given by China in the first month and later when the, the, the disease start to appear in the Europe, that time has been wasted. And this is even more critical for countries like uh, uh, UK. Now here we have wasted around two and a half months and Sweden is doing the same mistake. So overall, the scenario really is that um, that the, the, the time that we have been given is wasted. But at the same time, when the disease appeared in the Europe and in the Americas, it came by storm. So it left very little option for the government to really prepare to the extent they should have been prepared. And because of this one, the overall supply for the reagent is really down. And to be clear here is that the reagents that are required to make the tests probably are OK, because that is ramp ramped up very uh, quickly. However, there are other associated reagents that are required to prepare samples to put into the tests. Those are the ones those are in the shortage, and not only shortage in the um, uh, less equipped country, but even in the countries which are major producers, producers like China and Germany, they are still uh, lacking. And this is down to lack of preparedness right from the beginning. And uh, I just want to ask you about uh something else so many countries have been in lockdown for up to three weeks so why are we still seeing rises in numbers when china's slowed very dramatically oh that, that's again very important really to understand and discuss at this moment is that there are certain factors that need to be considered before we claim the benefit from any lockdown the first thing is that how extensive the lockdown has been and also for the, du the duration that has been put in and at the time when it has been put in. If we take the example of China, it was done at the right time and it was done to the scale it was needed and it was so extensive and really locked down the one that we define the lockdown like freezing the moment. But when it comes to the countries in the Europe, for example, Italian, they put that lockdown in phases. And during that lockdown uh, gradually increase, people have been moving very frequently. Those who are the ones that not only spread the infection, but also made the lockdown less effective. So once we talk about the benefit coming out of the lockdown, this factor has to be considered at what particular time it has been put in, for how long it is. And also the important is this, that if just putting a lockdown, that means you are just minimizing the movement between different communities. It would certainly have impact on to the reducing the uh, overall spread of the infection. But still, if you don't identify the people who are positive into the society, you won't be able to isolate them. So just not the locking down, but ramping up the testing capabilities is absolutely important before you count anything out of the locking down. And then it coming back to the lack of preparedness, lack of the availability of these diagnostic tests that is also adding fuel in the fire. So overall scenario is that the lockdown that is being put in place in the Europe would require longer time to get benefit compared to what we have seen in China. As you say, uh, the, the slowness in testing, um, yeah, c combined with the phased lockdown. Um, so just a, uh, well, well, actually, we've run out of time, but we'll leave it there. Uh, Dr. Mohamed Munir, uh, thank you so much. It is always great to have you on the show. I learned so much.